art YouTuber. When I started this channel eight months ago, I was clueless about YouTube. I didn't know anything about filming or editing or having a YouTube channel, nothing at all. And so what I did was I went on YouTube and I searched for videos about how to do YouTube, how to do everything that's involved in a YouTube channel. And so today I'm creating one of those videos for you guys in the hopes of helping you maybe start your own YouTube channel or start creating videos. I will take you behind the scenes of my entire video creation process. I will show you all of the gear that I use, the software and just my whole step-by-step -step process that's taken me at least six months to figure out. So let's dive in. Let's start by looking at the gear that I'm actually filming with. And one of those things is my iPhone 12, which I'm holding right now. So I can't show you that <laughs> and film at the same time, but I am filming a lot of my stuff with my iPhone. For example, when I'm painting, I am almost always filming with my iPhone. <coughs> And that's because it's the easiest. I recently got these. You just mount them to like a windowsill or something. This is where I put my, my phone, just like that. And I can change the angle. Sometimes you see me film from this angle and other times I just film it from the top, top down like this. And then this one is a light. It's a ring light, so it's LED, and now it's super bright in my room because the sun is up, so you're probably not going to see much, but it has different light settings uh, for the strength of the light and also for the temperature of the light. So it can have a warmer light like this, or it can have a really cold light like this, and then something in between. I usually opt for this really cold light. And then this is just a... Uh, an extra long charging cable for my phone because I don't want to be surprised by the battery dying on me as I'm filming. I also have this. This is a daylight lamp. It has a weird angle right now because I don't want the... these lamps are really strong and if I were to turn these straight down at my painting it would just be an ugly glare on the paper, especially when the paper is wet. So that's why I have it angled up toward the roof like this, because then the light bounces off the roof and down here for more natural soft light. And if it's really dark, I use both this daylight lamp and also this LED light to have light sources from different angles. But I always prefer using natural light whenever possible. So that's it for the light. Let's look at the recording equipment. So apart from the phone that I'm obviously using right now. I also have a DSLR camera and this is a Canon EOS uh, M50. Affordable, very nice camera that I know a lot of other YouTubers and vloggers use. It has a screen which is really useful. You absolutely want that. You want to be able to flip this out like that so you can actually see yourself as you're filming and see that the angle is right and how you look and all of that. And this is just the lens that came with the camera, so I don't use any special fancy lenses or anything like that. And I also have this microphone. You mount it on top of the camera and then there's a an outlet for it on the other side. I use this if I'm filming somewhere not close to my computer. Usually when I'm recording myself, I am in my studio and I'm in front of my computer and I have this microphone in front of me, which picks up the audio. And then I combine that afterwards when I'm editing. I'm combining the, the video from my camera and the audio from my microphone. And then we have different kinds of camera mounts. This is just one of those spider looking thingies that you can bend and fasten onto stuff and then I mount the camera here or I can use this one on top and then I can have my my iPhone on here which I don't use that much because I prefer this thingy. It is a selfie stick so you can use this one wirelessly to snap the photos and then you put the phone here and then you can make this one really long. And then it has little legs to stand on. <laughs> there. 
So this is a really versatile tool and I think I found it on Amazon. I'm not sure. I'm gonna look that up for you. I'm gonna put everything that I show you here in the description so you know what to look for. And then I also have this one and I just want to show this. I don't use this anymore, but I did in the beginning. And this is one of those really cheap iPhone mounts, whatever you call them. Put your phone in there and you can angle it the way you want and, and then just put it on your desk like that. I found that especially if you're drawing and you're erasing or you're like touching the surface a lot, it's going to create lots of little like motions like this and it's gonna be really annoying <laughs> that's why i mounted these on a windowsill like this and not the table and then we also have this one which is for my camera like that and then let me just show you this little thing i i showed this in my home studio tour and it's one of my own creations and it's just a desk lamp that i removed the actual lamp from and these are just parts from another one of uh, these desk mounts like like the one i showed you here this one actually served me well for a lot of months this is what i used in the beginning and you can always take the dyi approach am i right so that's it for the recording equipment i am right now working on a script on a voiceover script for one of my paint casts as i call them where i just paint and i talk about something and i haven't decided what to talk about yet i only have the footage of a recent painting and now i'm going to write the script for that and hopefully today i will also be able to record the voiceover because i'm home alone today and i always prefer to film and talk and do that kind of stuff when i'm alone because i'm very self-conscious I'm using Evernote for my video planning. I prefer to just use simple text. I've tried using tools like Notion, but I found that it was just too overly complicated for that particular task. So I've just really created a little template for myself, a text template that contains a title where I just write out a bunch of ideas for titles and then also thumbnail, my ideas for the thumbnail, if I have any, um, like what I want to show on the picture and if I want to write any text on it and what texts that could be and then the description the description template and this is the same that i use for all of my videos i just add like a description for the video in the start and then if i mention any other videos or resources i add in the timestamps of course and then the rest is just the same as with all of my videos the same links and the same about text and, and all of that and then i maybe i outline my video and i add like bullet points for everything that i want to make sure that i include and then there's a script headline and this is where i write out exactly word for word what i'm gonna say and that's what i usually end up doing because i am a control freak <laughs> and it makes it a lot easier when I know exactly what I'm gonna say. So the filming takes less time and also the editing takes less time. I'm not a good talker, essentially, uh, uh, etc. <laughs> I've become a better talker now after doing this for eight months, but I was not at the beginning. I would just sit and stare blankly into space and sort of buffer my thoughts. Um... And that's why I started to write out my scripts. Like my previous video, I had a bunch of footage and I knew kind of what I wanted to talk about and I just wrote the script. I wrote it like I would write a blog post. And when I had done that, I knew what the video was about. And so I started brainstorming titles. I have in the back of my mind keywords and what types of keywords and phrases is more likely for other people to search for. I touch upon a lot of different points in this video and that's why you see I have a bunch of different ideas here for what I could possibly name this video. And I eventually landed on, I think I landed on this one in the end. Thumbnail, I didn't really start out with an idea for the thumbnail. It was something that I kind of made up <laughs> in the end and it turned out good, but other times I would actually write my idea for the thumbnail so i know exactly what to photograph and when i have the script written out that's when i 
record the voiceover the way that I'm doing right now. You just can't see it because I've hidden it from the frame, but this is my microphone. And so I usually capture my video with my camera and then simultaneously I'm recording uh, the audio with my microphone because that way I get better quality audio and that's really important. I just read from my script or if there's a script where I will actually talk to the camera, I will usually sit the way that I sit now and I would have the script on the screen and I would just memorize a couple of lines at a time and then I would say them to the camera. I know some people use teleprompters, but that just feels so stiff <laughs> to me. I think you can see, you can see it on someone if they're reading from a teleprompter. They have like this really stiff staring <laughs> appearance, you know, it just doesn't look natural. This is not how you look at someone when you talk to them naturally. This is getting kind of weird for both you and me, right? I want my videos to feel more organic. So yeah, that's the planning stage. I have an idea for a video. I grab my template. I start by writing a bunch of ideas for the title and the thumbnail because those are the most important components. That's the way that I will get my video shown to people. If I don't have an interesting idea and a good title and a good thumbnail, no one's gonna watch the video anyway. So I start by doing that and then I write the script and sometimes I write the description and everything on beforehand too. And then I plan out my shooting. I plan out exactly what type of shots I'm gonna need. This thing that you're watching right now, me talking to the camera, that's a role and that's like the main story of the video, the main narrative. And then we have B-roll, which is all of these little insert shots, you know, you see detail shots or screen captures, maybe different camera angles. The videos where I'm just showing you a painting process and then talking on top of it, I'm considering my voiceover talking to be the A-roll because that's the main the main story and the painting process is the b-roll and so i plan exactly what i'm gonna need i try to visualize my video beforehand i try to see it in my mind's eye <laughs> what shots i want to open with like the intro shots which is very important the first 30 seconds one minute of your video is where you capture the audience attention and hopefully maintain it and when i have my script and i have my shot list with everything that I'm gonna film or take photos of or gather online, then I'm ready to move on to the production phase. So my production phase can look two different ways. Either I'm doing one of these paint casts that I mentioned, where I'm just talking to footage of me painting. And in those cases, I already have the videos of the painting process done. I film most of the stuff that I paint so that I'll have material on hand for these types of videos. Then I just come up with a topic that I want to talk about and I write the script, I record the voiceover, I cut it all together, put on some background music, and then I'm done. This takes me around one to two days altogether, usually. Or I'm making one of the videos that you're watching right now, where there's a lot more variety and complexity, where I am talking on camera and cutting between a lot of different types of footage to tell a story or do a tutorial. These videos are trickier to plan and take a lot more time to produce. For starters, I need to make myself presentable. I never thought I would be one of those people who films themselves while putting on makeup. Never in a million years, especially not at 38, you know. And then rig the camera and record my A-roll. That's the main content of the video, the storyline. And then also all of the b-roll that I need. Variety is key if you want to keep your video interesting to watch. Lots of b-roll, lots of different shots to cut between. Finally, I also take the photos that I need for my thumbnail. And that's the end of the production phase. Now it's time for post-production, editing the video. I gather everything that I've filmed and photographed onto my computer. I start a new project 
in Adobe Premiere Pro, which is the editing software that I use. Here I import all my assets into the video project and I start adding them to the timeline in roughly the order that I want. This is called a rough cut, the first round of editing where you're just getting everything out onto the timeline and cutting away all of the junk and the outtakes and all of the mental buffering. This is usually the most time consuming task for me. I am meticulous in my editing. I cut away every pause that's slightly longer than it needs to be because all of those little pauses add up and decrease the momentum and the flow of the video. When my rough cut is done, I start from the beginning of my video and I fine tune as I go. I add in all the B-roll shots, I tweak the colors in my shots, I tweak the audio, I add background music and maybe some sound effects. I add text and sometimes little graphics. What you're seeing now is a very simple video. This is what some of my more complex videos look like with lots more layers of B-roll and text and graphics and sound effects. I obviously can't explain all of this in detail right now, but I might do in a future video because video editing is an art form that I've fallen madly deeply in love with. It's so much fun and I want more people to discover that. Anyways, when my video is done and is exporting, which usually takes a little while, I start working on the thumbnail. I choose my favorite photo and I edit it in Adobe Lightroom. Usually that means adjusting the cropping, removing distracting details in the background, and adjusting the white balance and the colors and the contrast. If there's artwork in the picture, like here, I want the colors of the subject to pop and everything else around it to fade away a little bit. Next step is to import the image into the app Procreate on my iPad to do the final edits and to add some hand-drawn details. I like to add text to a lot of my thumbnails and that's something that I have in mind as I'm photographing and editing the photo. I think about the placement of the subject in the frame and the space that I'll have for my text. And when I edit the photo, I make sure that the area where I'll put my text is dark enough for my white text to show. So here I'm further darkening the area behind the text to make it read more clearly. Sometimes I do several versions of the thumbnail to try different ideas out and also to have a few backups if I notice that the video isn't getting many views then I might try a different thumbnail. The thumbnail is very, very, very important. Like video editing, it's a craft that you'll get better at the more you do it. And now, finally, it's time to publish. My video has finished exporting and the next step is to upload it to YouTube. This also takes a little while, depending on how long the video is and how good your connection is. While I'm waiting, I am adding my title and my description. I'm uploading my thumbnail, adding those links that you see at the end of the video, that's called the end screen. And when everything is uploaded and ready, I schedule the video for when I want it to go live. And that's it. That's how I make my videos. Now you have an idea what goes on behind the scenes. I mean, everyone's process is different, of course, but this is just the way that I've found that works for me. And maybe you can take some inspiration from that. I hope this has been helpful for you the way that all of those other YouTubers were helpful to me in the beginning. I know I haven't touched upon everything that really goes on behind the scenes because that would be a very long video and probably not be that interesting to most of you. So this is an abbreviated behind the scenes look of what the process looks like. If you have any questions at all, just feel free to ask them. Thank you as always for spending time with me, for watching my videos. I appreciate you very much and uh, we'll see each other in another video.